Saint Mary of the Cross, make it up. The Story of Mary This story is based on the life of St. Mary of the Cross MacKillop, born January 15th, 1842 and died August 8th, 1909. Illustrations and narration by Marina Colagrossi, Sydney, Australia. Many years ago, there was a Scottish couple, Alexander MacKillop and Flora MacDonald, who lived in Fitzroy, Victoria, which is found in Australia. One January night, they had a beautiful baby girl. Her name was Mary. Mary's dad, Alexander, loved his daughter very, very much. He would always motivate her all the time. We are so blessed to have you, Mary. We are proud of you, he would say. Mary loved to learn with her dad. He would teach her everything from maths to English and, most importantly, religion. One night, Mary's dad got very sick. Her mum stuck by his side as her dad found the strength to sit up and hold Mary's hand, telling her, Never give up your dream to help people. God is with you, Mary. Mary's dad moved back to his hometown in Scotland, where he remained for the rest of his time. This had left Mary's mum, Mary, and her eight siblings to struggle with everyday living. Mary kept working very hard to provide for her family while she taught children in Panola. It was later on Mary had met Father Julian Tennyson Woods. Father Woods had asked Mary if she could please help him teach religious education to children in the outback who had very little. This was Mary's dream, but with her family depending on her income, it was very hard for her to follow this dream. It was 1866 that Mary was greatly inspired by Father Woods. Young women came to join Mary, and so the Sisters of St. Joseph had begun. Mary had met many mean people on her journey that didn't agree to her teachings. Even in the most difficult of times, she would never attack those who wrongly accused or were cruel to her, but continued in her patient and peaceful way. Mary had the strength to keep teaching for she believed God was calling her to continue to live in his footsteps and help the children and people in need. Mary had fought many illnesses, but this one particular time she became very ill, so she moved to a convent of the Sisters of St. Joseph in North Sydney. August 8, 1909, Mary died. She is now left to rest in a tomb at North Sydney. Her legacy and teachings live on with God's presence and a strong foundation with the Sisters of St. Joseph. Together, they help children all around the world in need and its people.